Hi students, welcome back. And today, now in this module, we will study how to assign an oxidation number to the element. Now, before moving on to the rules to assign oxidation number, we must understand what does it mean when we say oxidation number. Students, when an atom is in its elemental form, that is, for example, if I take sodium as such, Na, the way it is written in periodic table, we say sodium has neither lost electron, neither it has gained electron. So, we say the charge present on sodium is zero. Or when I say sodium has lost electron forming a cation Na plus 1, we say the charge present on sodium is plus 1. So, oxidation number is nothing but the charge which an atom will carry whenever it is in its combined state in the form of a molecule or in the form of a complex or maybe a cation or anion. Now, there are certain rules to understand that. So, let us see first the definition of oxidation number. An oxidation number or a state of an atom in a molecule or ion is defined as the number of charges it will carry whenever it loses all the electron or whenever the electrons are completely transferred. That is, when an atom either lose electron or gain electron, we will come to know by calculating its oxidation number. Means, if we simplify it, atom has how many electrons which are lost or gained when it forms a complex. That means an oxidation number. So, let's just see the rules to assign oxidation number of an atom in a molecule or complex. The very first rule is, whenever we say oxidation number in its elemental state, we take it as zero. Now, what do you mean by elemental state? For example, if I take Cl2, Br2, O2, O3, P4, S8, they are just present the way they are present. In this state, neither they have lost electrons nor they have gained electrons. So, in this state, we will take the number as 0. And if it's in its monovalent or divalent state, for example, if you see on the screen, it's Zn plus 2, Cu plus 1. That is, Zn has already lost 2 electron and it has gained a charge of plus 2. So, in that case, we will take the oxidation number of Zn as plus 2 and copper as plus 1. Rule number 2. For alkali metals, the oxidation number is always plus 1. Now, which are the alkali metals? They are lithium. Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium and cesium. Last one is francium. So, how do I remember this? all these six elements? The simple mnemonic is Lina K RBCs for R. We have a simple mnemonic to remember this is group 1 elements are Lina K RBCs for R. Simple. Right. Rule number 3 students. The rule number 3 is alkaline earth metal that is group 2 elements will be always assigned an oxidation number of plus 2. And which are the elements of alkaline earth metal? They are beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, radium right, and barium. Now how do I remember these elements? Again a simple mnemonic we have to remember this. That is, Betty, Mage, Car, Centro, Ba, Proe. Yes, I repeat, Betty, Mage, Car, Centro, Ba, Proe. It's a simple mnemonic to remember elements of group 2. Now, a very simple technique to remember. Group 1, that is plus 1 oxidation state. Group 2, so plus 2 oxidation state. So, the oxidation state of these elements are fixed. We do not need to worry about the oxidation state of these elements. Moving further with the rule 4, that is oxidation number of fluorine. Now students, fluorine is the highest electronegative element in the periodic table, the electronegativity of 4. So it will always have tendency to gain electron, it will never lose electron. And how many electrons each fluorine atom can gain? Yes, obviously just one electron. So oxidation state of fluorine will be always minus 1. Moving further, rule number 5. Oxidation number of oxygen. Now, here there are certain parameters on which we need to decide whether the oxidation number of oxy oxygen will be minus 2, minus 1 or minus half. The first one is whenever it is in the form of oxides. When I say oxides means as oxygen is divalent, it will have two bonds. And if both the bonds are connected to different atoms other than oxygen, then we say oxidation state of oxygen will be minus 2. 
If we say peroxides, means oxygen being divalent, one of the bond will be attached to some other element, can be positive or electronegative, but other bond will be connected to other oxygen atom. Then we say the oxidation number will be minus 1. And in the case of superoxides, where the oxygen will have oxidation state of minus half. Now, superoxides are only possible with group 1 element, last 3 elements that is potassium, cesium and rubidium. We do not consider francium as it is a radioactive element. right? So, in this case of peroxide, it will be minus half. Moving further, that is rule number 6, oxidation number of hydrogen. Now, this can be either minus 1 or plus 1. When it can be minus 1? Whenever it combines with group 1 or group 2 elements. That is, whenever it has tendency to gain electron, it will be termed as minus 1. And whenever it um, combines with other elements, can be, can be from P block, can be from D block, then we say the oxidation state of the hydrogen will be plus 1. Because with group 1 and group 2, the electronegativity of hydrogen will be more than them. Hence, it will have tendency to gain electrons and as hydrogen have tendency to just gain one electron, it will be minus one with alkali metals and alkaline earth metals. Whereas for P block and other blocks, other than S block, it will be plus one. Last rule, that is rule number seven. Here, I will just read out the rule. We will understand this rule once we solve the example. So, the rule number seven is, Algebraic sum of oxidation number of all the atoms in a neutral molecule will be always zero. For example, if a molecule is given like KMnO4 where no charges are mentioned overall, we say the oxidation number will be or the algebraic sum of the oxidation numbers will be zero. Or if I have a cation or anionic complex where there is some charge mentioned over the complex, we take that number as algebraic sum of the oxidation number. Right. Now, you must be wondering why only group 1 and group 2 just have fixed oxidation number and why not P block elements? Because students, P block elements have variable oxidation state. There are range where the oxidation number varies. For example, if we talk about boron family, it can have minus 1 as well as plus 3 as oxidation state. It can either lose 1 or 3 electron. If we talk about next group that is carbon family, it can have ranging from minus 4 to plus 4. For the next family that is nitrogen family, it can range from minus 3 to plus 5. That is nitrogen either can lose minus 3, that is 3 electrons, can lose 1 electron or it can gain 1, 3 and 5 electrons respectively. Similarly, oxygen family oxidation state can vary from minus 2 to plus 6. That is, it can either gain 2 electrons and lose 6 electrons depending with the atom with which it can combine. And the last family, that is halogen family. Here, we have an exception of fluorine which is fixed as minus 1 oxidation state and rest oxidation state can vary from minus 1 to plus 7. Students, we have few more complexes whose oxidation number will be better if you remember it because in complex compounds, we need to remember the oxidation number of the complexes. So, if you talk about anions and if you see on the screen like sulfate have minus 2, carbonate have minus 2, cyanide have minus 1, OH will be minus 1, PO4 minus 3, NO3 minus 1 and NO2 will be minus 1. Similarly, we have certain cations where NH4 will be always as plus 1, NO will be plus 1 and neutral molecule like water will be 0 and NH3 will be 0. So, I think it is very much clear to understand how to assign the oxidation number. In our next modules, we will be learning the examples where we will see the oxidation number calculation. Till then, goodbye. Thank you.